Hey, New Egg viewers, uh, Juan Carlos Bagnell here with Robert hey, Pollock. That's right. Is that nailed it. Okay. Yep, nailed it. Um, and uh, we're going to talk some AMD, if you hadn't noticed, just we've got AMD signage and stuff behind us. Mm -hmm. So I I hear you you guys had some products to talk about, <laughs> yes. making a little noise. We did a thing. Uh, we've got the brand new <laughs> AMD third gen Ryzen processor. The big storyline is that gamers want single threaded performance. Yes. They want multi threaded performance and they want power efficiency and third gen ryzen is the industry leader in all three of those so if you're an enthusiast or a gamer you know you don't have to compromise by getting third gen ryzen now we we took a couple meetings earlier this morning mm -hmm. we were kind of walking around the show floor hardware partners are very excited about this part as they and, should be and <laughs> i just you know like, to let you know no. you, you can okay. talk to some of your manufacturing yeah, yeah, yeah. partners and they're saying nice things about you mm -hmm. um what were some of those considerations coming into uh, Ryzen 2? True. I'm on a I'm on a Threadripper. I mean, awesome. Thanks. <laughs> we're, we're talking about trying to blur some of those high performance lines, mm. which I think have been segmented in the past. Sure. You know, gamers versus content creators yeah. and finding parts that can kind of satisfy a broader Both. swath. Um, coming into Ryzen 3, what, what were some of those goals? Because it seems like mm. we've, we've reached a, a pretty, pretty solid platform for competition. Uh, well, let's see. For us, it's the Continuing to push that single-threaded performance is an obsession for us. Uh, as Lisa, Dr. Lisa Sue, our CEO, said the other day, mm -hmm. that lifts all boats, and it doesn't matter what kind of workload you do. If you have higher IPC, it gets faster. Right. So our first generation Zen was 52% higher, and then the middle one was about 3 to 5%, and then this one is another 15% on top of that. So compounding just this massive single-thread performance increase. Uh, and so that makes every core faster right. and then increasing what we call compute density or how much total performance is packed into the same processor. Our new seven nanometer partnership with TSMC really allows us to pack in more cores in the same amount of space. So whereas we were previously able to fit a maximum of eight in the platform, mm -hmm. now we can go up to 12. Right. So it's a 50% jump just from uh, shrinking the size of every transistor. So those are two of the big things, but there are many that we were really focused on. Now that that uh, fabrication, that, mm. that die shrink, I mean, obviously we've been talking about R&D years sure. in the making, sure. getting to this point now, but it's proven to be somewhat challenging for some of your competitors out there. Yes. Um, getting to that and then also knowing uh, that the chip yield is looking really solid. On, on this generation right out of the gate. Sure. We've got better single core performance, we've got mm -hmm. better multi-core performance, but we are still in that arms race of trying to keep thermals in check when you're running parts that aggressively. Absolutely, I mean, creating a high performance processor always carries thermal implications, but seven nanometer runs at a lab, at lower average voltage, mm -hmm. which will help. Uh, and then just it's a much more efficient process overall such that whereas an eight core processor last generation might have been 95 to 105 watts TDP, this year we can do m much more performance at 65 watts nice. TDP, right? So the, the cooler required on top of that chip is about 40% lower year over year. Or, or you keep the same TDP and you do a 50% increase in core counts, <laughs> right? Right. So that's that's a pretty nice story. And that, that more than anything is the real big takeaway of, of seven nanometer. Now, has there been conversation, and again, because I know you have to be working really closely with all of the manufacturers sure. that are supporting the actual chip, but ha have you seen any uptick in, we've been really excited by some of the creative ITX solutions yes. that are coming out for Ryzen yes. 3. Has, what what has that conversation looked like with some of your partners? Well, uh, you know, getting motherboards into the market is, is a little bit political, to be honest, right? Mm -hmm. that you, they, you want your partners to believe in you and that, that they trust you to be around for a while in the market. And first gen Ryzen had about 15 launch motherboards. Second gen was 20 to 25, mm -hmm. and now we're at 56 at, just at launch. at launch. And then a company like Asus has already announced 30 motherboards total, which yeah. is larger than our entire launch assortment for second gen. So that sort of reflects how much they believe in the platform and how much they're willing to bet on the platform and it's very very strong endorsement from them and i hope that signals to the rest of the public like what we're trying to accomplish with this now do you think the when we're talking about ryzen 3 that this is gonna start moving more into the living room we've been hearing about this for generations now uh, sure. we're gonna have computers in the living room and we're gonna have sure, sure, sure. and stuff like that we're, I think we're starting to see some of that traction actually 
getting a toehold, getting some consumer I mind share on. You can have this tiny little box and it's a full computer. Sure, sure. I, I, I mean, I'm probably the perfect use case for this. At home, I run a Ryzen 5 2400G mm -hmm. in an ITX form factor. Uh, and that is enough to play most of the games that I would want to play on, on a big screen TV from my Steam library. And you know, it's, it's a tiny little computer the size of a lunchbox, but it has full desktop performance, right. right? And third gen Ryzen, I can't say too much, but we're making some interesting options available for customers who want high core counts nice. in smaller form factors. And it's not just, it's not just the motherboard. Uh, so we'll get there around the E3 time frame. We can explain more of what we mean, but we hear the people who want uh, a lot of performance in a small form factor, and there are things that we can do as a company to help enable that. Nice. So one of the things, because I I come from more of a media production. Okay. You know, like when I build a box, like that's the main sure. focus, so. and I like to play some games sure. on it too. Um, has that been one of the driving design influences on this generation of chipset absolutely or, uh, well it, it's it's i'm always looking for ways to kind of break down you know uh, sure 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 to justify a work purchase i completely it. understand <laughs> uh i think the reality is that gamers are increasingly getting into content creation mm -hmm. um simply as a result of what's popular in the gaming market you look right. at the the rise of twitch and suddenly many many more people are doing video encoding than ever and right? live live yeah. live video encoding and it's not somebody sitting in front of adobe premiere or sony vegas anymore it's some guy who just hits stream and he's not even thinking about what's actually happening right and that takes a lot of compute performance and it's also true that the processor is the best way to encode video it has the highest quality for the bit rate available mm -hmm. and it's you know about 5,000 kilobits is all you get right right so you want the most quality out of that budget that you have so thinking about those use cases and the idea that People might do content creation professionally, such as yourself, and right. then go play a game at home. That is absolutely one of the driving factors by us continuing to increase core counts in addition to single-threaded performance. And leaning into more of the professional space, mm -hmm. Epic was making sure. a little noise too. I, we had a conversation off camera where we were talking about um, moving things server side, absolutely. not just not just game streaming, but some professional applications as well. Sure. I, a, a little on AMD's strategy. For, for those platforms. It's a little bit outside of my wheelhouse. I normally deal with desktop stuff, but uh, certainly you'll hear in comments from my colleagues who work on uh, Radeon Instinct for servers mm -hmm. or Epic from server that there is uh, starting to be enough compute performance available in the cloud or even sort of consider the classic mainframe view of, you know, right. you have a bunch of employees in the company they have very thin clients and they're all farmed out to virtual machines on the server that is making a resurgence in, yeah. in business. Uh, because the latency of, of local networks is getting so good, you know, 10 gigabit ethernet and sub one millisecond timings and Wi-Fi six. And it's just, it's just a lot easier to connect people to a mainframe and give them a full PC's worth of hardware. And if you look like a, uh, at a product like Epic with as many cores as it has, suddenly it's very easy to give you know, essentially a quad core to every VM that happens to be connected to that server. Now, because I have a little skin in the game, is this yeah. like a potential roadmap that I could kind of envision where my Threadripper <laughs> what else might be going? So I think people, <laughs> I think people have looked at third gen Ryzen and mm -hmm. said, okay, well, you just went to 12 cores in your mainstream socket and Threadripper, 12 cores and 16 cores today, mm -hmm. what does that mean? <laughs> uh, what I can say is that I've seen the news saying, you know, Threadripper's canceled. I want to say Threadripper's absolutely not canceled. There will be a third gen Threadripper. <laughs> the other thing that I want to say is that as socket AM4 moves up in performance, mm -hmm. Threadripper, of course, has to move up, up. Right. So I think if that's your aspiration, you're then, then you're going to be happy. To to. Yeah, you okay. have something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I've got built this whole case around it. I kind of yeah, yeah. like to just keep, keep totally, on that train. Totally understand I, it. You will be able to stay on that I've train. Left, I've been left behind on previous chipsets. and Well, I, I think you've I seen from us that we don't like to leave people behind on yeah. previous chipsets. If you look at socket AM4, that was a, a socket that started with four cores and four threads on 28 nanometer. One, one die on the chip. And now it's 12 cores, 24 threads, three dies on the chip. It has PCI Gen 4. We're pushing 50% more memory bandwidth through the processor. And that's all on the same socket. So that socket has grown from 
across four generations yeah. of, of CPU, and and absolutely nobody in this industry has ever attempted anything like that. Uh, there have been some sockets that hosted one or two CPUs generationally, but never four. I've always been that guy who like I'll hold off on an upgrade. I'll hold it off. On yeah, an upgrade. yeah. And then it becomes like, no, nah, I need to. Five do years later, things. I'm still yeah. waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. I just gotta rip everything out and yeah, start yeah. fresh. So we were we were taking a meeting this morning uh, with a company uh, talking about their graphics solutions, okay. and uh, it was kind of adorable because they had concepts of what yes, some okay. of their future video cards might look yeah, like. Yeah, okay. They seemed to have been a little surprised that the word Navi was mentioned mm. during AMD's keynote. I was, I was wondering if there was anything that we could talk about as it pertains to AMD graphics. I'm, I'm not a graphics expert at AMD. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm strictly a CPU guy. But what I will say is if the Computex keynote was 80% third gen Ryzen, 20% mm -hmm. Navi, you can look forward to E3, which will be 80% Navi, 20% third gen Ryzen, right? So if you're just a graphics guy and you want to know more about what's coming for Radeon, E3 is the show to watch. Okay, so just to wrap this up, because and thank you for taking the time yeah, to, of course. to sit with us here. Just you personally, because we were having this conversation offline. I Some of the partner boards that are coming out, some mm -hmm. of the new feature sets that yes. are coming out, building. Uh, this seems like it's the right time for great competition mm -hmm. in the PC builder space, in the pre-built PC market, yeah. uh, computers that span multi-use case scenarios. Just what are you looking forward to? You're going to be building your own box. What, uh, what are you wanting to? I am to, to absolutely pack in going to be build, building my own box. Uh, I already have a Ryzen 9 3900X <laughs> lined up. Uh, I have a source inside the company who can get me one. I was going to say, if anyone had yeah. some, some insider, yeah. Uh, one of the perks of working at a microprocessor <laughs> company, you get motherboards and CPUs for free. Um, <laughs> So I'm absolutely going to build the 12-core system. I want the most performance. I am primarily a gamer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I run a 34-inch, 3440, 1440, 120 hertz panel at home. I want the most performance I can possibly get in my PC. And I am 100% confident that Ryzen 9 3900X for me is going to be the answer. OK, this is, this is, this is the delicate question then. Okay. You build that box. I do. What's the first game you play on it? Uh, right now, it would probably be Rocket League. I have okay. 1,300 hours in Rocket League. Right. So that's, uh, you know, I could have been learning Mandarin or, <laughs> or like, I don't know, gotten a master's degree or something, but instead I just played Rocket League. Um, that, so yeah, I'm probably going to spend a lot of money on a system to play Rocket League. And play it even better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is it you do? You play Minecraft. Uh, so looking just this idea of what, what enthusiasts are looking for, they want the most IO on their platform, they want the most single thread performance, they want the most multi-thread performance, they want the highest power efficiency, and they want the best price. Those are the five things that you as a microprocessor company can deliver on, and third gen Ryzen and X570 wins every single one of those categories. And so I take the view that I don't really care what kind of enthusiast you are, we have the answer for you this year right. in 2019. Now, outside of the enthusiast space, though, sure. uh, I think one of the things that's been sort of exciting from a democratizing standpoint, mm. though, is watching a, a, so we've got like a feature and performance war happening at the Absolutely high end. Absolutely, we do. And the high end isn't nearly as expensive to start building around as, as it, it used to be. be. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, competition is good. Um, but also that exciting entry level sure. market where entry level PCs. We we did it. We recently did a build on Newegg now. Okay. Where I think we we ended up with somewhere like around a four or five hundred dollar. Yeah, that's just, what I would expect. Just slightly above like mm -hmm. a console pricing. Absolutely. But ended up with performance that it actually plays. Yeah. Really, really solid. Yeah. So uh, as to AMD strategy right mm -hmm. there, because it's not like you've walked away from. It, it's not like you focus just on enthusiasts to a mm -hmm. point where, oh well, maybe some of these lower end parts, mm. they're actually generating just as much excitement sure. in the community, in the in the PC building community as your high end parts are. I think um, one of the mistakes that many often make is when they say enthusiast, they attach that to someone that uh, has they, a, to a price, to a right, price right. or to a certain amount of affluence in the customer. And for me, that's not the right decision. Like you can be a PC enthusiast regardless of what your budget is. And I don't mm -hmm. care if it's a $400 computer or a $4,000 computer. To me, you are an enthusiast. And I want you to have the best possible performance that I can help provide. And so if that's a $99 processor, I'm gonna make the best damn $99 <laughs> processor I can make, right? And, and, and so there are people buying at all budgets. And anytime you lose sight of that, 
you're in for trouble. Well, Robert, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank I really you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, folks. I, this is uh, Robert with AMD. Obviously, AMD and third generation Ryzen has been making a ton of noise Absolutely. all over Computex and just the press in general. We're going to have a lot more information coming up on products that are going to support these chips coming up soon on this uh, this YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed for New Egg Studios. I'm one Carlos Bagnell. Thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing. And I'll catch you all on the next video. Adios.